Hi, Foundry family. We're Chris and Dan Castellero. Hi, I'm going to be reading uh, from Genesis 15, 1 through 6, and Genesis 16, 1 through 6. The Lord's covenant with Abram. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit? My estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai had said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. Doesn't this story kind of remind you of a sitcom? The one where the dad in the family does a good thing and becomes somewhat of a hero? Only to walk headlong into a disaster that you can see coming, but our hero doesn't. Abram, soon to be renamed Abraham by God, was walking with God and trusting in God's promise. After 90-some years, he cried out to God with his deep concern. God showed him what was his future, and Abram believed it. God was pleased. Abram was pleased. Next chapter. How often we, do we begin strong only to have time wear away our resolve? We stop waiting on God and we start fixing our problem. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And 2 Peter 3, 8 says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. I sympathize with Abram and Sarai. Their situation seemed impossible, yet taking things into their own hands brought nothing but heartache, which continues to this day. It's trusting in God and waiting on His perfect timing that we grow in faith. Even when waiting seems long, waiting on God is always the right thing to do. Think about things that you're waiting for. While you wait, are you bringing your concerns before Him? Are you giving God control of the situation? Are you trusting Him while you wait? We pray this devotion encourages you and challenges you today. Thank Be you. blessed. Thanks.